Hi everybody, I'm Chris Wook from Android Authority, and today we're taking a look at the HTC Droid DNA. Now, I actually got to take a peek at this back in November when we covered its official announcement by HTC and Verizon. At that event, there was one thing they wanted to make very, very clear, and that is that they want users to think of the DNA as a phone, not as a phablet. After using it for a while, I'm inclined to agree. Even though it isn't all that much smaller than, say, a Samsung Galaxy Note 2, there is a difference, and over time, that becomes a key difference that's very, very noticeable. Anyway, let's get started with the review, beginning with the specs. Obviously, the most talked about spec of the HTC Droid DNA is its 5-inch 1080p screen with a pixel density of 441 pixels per inch, but the other specs are impressive as well. The DNA runs a Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro chipset with a 1.5 GHz quad-core crate processor. It has 2 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of internal storage, 11 gigs of which are actually usable. The rear-facing camera is 8 megapixels, while the front-facing camera is 2.1 megapixels. Both are capable of capturing 1080p video at 30 frames per second. While the HTC Droid DNA is built from plastic, it's a very sturdy phone. I haven't noticed any flimsiness in my time with it, and the creaking and groaning you sometimes notice with larger devices wasn't present here. While there isn't anything particularly stunning about the DNA's rounded rectangle design, there are a few nice touches like the relatively small bezel and the red highlights that lighten up the otherwise black and gray color scheme. Like a lot of recent devices, the Droid DNA is light on hardware buttons. On top, you have the power button, SIM card slot, and headphone jack. On the right side, we find the volume buttons, and on the bottom, the covered micro USB slot. On the back, we have the 8 megapixel rear facing camera and flash, along with an assortment of logos. And on the front, we have the 2.1 megapixel front facing camera and three capacitive buttons back, home, and recent apps. As you may have already heard, the display is the crowning jewel of the HTC Droid DNA. I was initially very skeptical about a 1080p screen that was only 5 inches, but when I first saw it in person, that skepticism faded away. You won't always notice it, but rendering of text, icons, and of course 1080p video are greatly improved by the screen's sheer pixel density. As to be expected from a phone with specs like this one, the Droid DNA performs very well. In the time I've been using it, I haven't encountered a single hiccup or incident of lag. Apps open very quickly, scrolling through home screens and the apps menu is very fluid, and the few games I've tried run very smoothly and look great in the process. The HTC Droid DNA runs Android 4.1 Jelly Bean, skinned with HTC Sense 4 Plus. Now, Sense has its fans and its detractors, but personally, I find it one of the least offensive user interface overlays. So far, there hasn't been much talk of an update to Android 4.2, but it's very likely in the pipeline for an early 2013 release. When it comes to other software, the usual bunch of Google and Verizon apps, plus a handful of Amazon apps are included as well as Slacker Radio, MX Serve, and, of course, Facebook. The HTC Droid DNA's camera is one of the best smartphone cameras I've seen in a long time. Colors are well represented, images are crisp, and it works very well in low-light situations. The 1080p video capture is very nice as well. Movement is smooth, and while this sample video you're seeing may not show it well, colors are very vivid. The battery is easily the weakest aspect of the Droid DNA. At only 2,020 milliamp hours, it simply isn't going to hold up for as long as a lot of other phones. Not only is it small, but it isn't replaceable either. For the purposes of this review, I've been using the DNA fairly heavily, and I've only been getting about 12 hours of battery life before I need to charge. A bigger battery would have been a huge improvement. Besides the battery, the only other two really negative aspects of the Droid DNA are the lack of a micro SD slot 
and the relatively small amount of internal storage. On the other hand, the DNA is fast, the screen is gorgeous, and audiophiles like me will really appreciate the fact that it has a dedicated amp just for the headphone jack, which really will help your music and other audio sound a whole lot better. Now that about wraps it up for our review, but if you have an opinion you'd like to share about the HTC Droid DNA, let us know in the comments below. Now if you're interested in knowing how the DNA stacks up against the Samsung Galaxy Note 2, we did a video back in November that may be of interest to you. It's called HTC Droid DNA versus the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. If you're not sure which of the two phones might be for you, make sure to check it out. I'm Chris Wook for Android Authority, and thanks for watching.